Okay, welcome to the uh, this workshop today, which is all about how to develop a content marketing plan. Um, we, we often speak to clients and uh, they say, oh yes, well, we post an article every, every so often and so forth. Well, that may have been okay maybe a, a few years ago, but what's happened since COVID is there has been a lot more da uh, digital marketing noise. Um, and uh, we've got one client who pre-COVID, pre pre-lockdowns, um, you know, they were, well, since pre-lockdown, their, their cost of acquisition has doubled, doubled. And uh, so it means you've got to be a lot more systematic. And as we all know, failing to plan is, is actually planning to fail. Um, so, um, you know, and, and we all know that no plans executed as originally envisaged. But what it does do is uh, put your thoughts to paper, put your intentions, uh, identify your priorities, and at least um, when you actually when the, when the plans implemented, when things do change, which they always do, you've got you'll at least thought through the uh, the consequences and the choices that you you will have to make. Okay. So for those who don't me, business and digital coach, uh, got qualifications, and the founder and managing director of Cub. We've been around for uh, twenty plus years. Uh, mainly as a coaching business and digital specialist. And then uh, Charlie, my daughter, joined me six years ago. And the um, agency grows from strength to strength. And um, we've worked with over 500 companies across a wide range of sets over the last 20 years, which means that when people ask me stuff, I, I generally work with that kind of business before. And um, I've had the pleasure of working with technology since 1984. Um, so I've seen huge, huge amounts of change. And, and it's not going to stop. Um, we're working on stuff, things, that, you know, we've got artificial intelligence, um, more bots, support through customer services and so forth. And some of you would be thinking, well, that's not good. But actually, I've had problems at around midnight trying to sort of the software issue out, being on, jumped onto somebody's web chat, and uh, I knew it was a bot I was talking to because it I kind of had that kind of rudeness to it, those blunt answers. But I got answers to my problem and I was able to go to bed before midnight. So, um, you know, that this is the future, guys, unfortunately. Or well, fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Okay, housekeeping, brilliant speaker view during the presentation and then gallery view during the interactive sessions. Uh, use mute when not talking. Please raise your hand when we're doing the chat. Raise your hand to electronically to contribute. Um, and uh, if uh, these are re being restreamed, these are being re uh, vi um, videoed, uh, recorded, sorry. Uh, so please switch off the video if you don't want to be recorded. Um, so, what's the purpose? Why, why are we doing this? I mean, you know, the amount of stress that builds up in five minutes before this thing goes live is, is, is quite intense, not just like a normal Zoom. So I do it. So we want, we want to help businesses compete in the digital world. We want to build on your knowledge. We recognize that um, everybody, um, if you're running a business, you do need to, to learn some marketing. It's not like in the past where marketing was sort of some, some kind of department or you just gave it to somebody and they did a bit of marketing and everything was fine. Um, you know, 70% of companies got their work through referrals. So marketing was a top up. Um, not the case these days, unfortunately. Um, and like I said, this company that, that literally inquired landed on my desk uh, on Monday and uh, they're wanting to know how they're going to get the cost of acquisition back down uh, to what it used to be. Um, uh, so we're here to help you build on that knowledge, help you solve your digital problems. Uh, so it's a free forum, free forever. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, in the last sort of 20 minutes, there's a chance to talk about marketing and so forth. We are part of a program uh, to launch a digital community um, on, a, on a platform NetHub. That launch is on the 4th, so I'll be able to tell you um, in a couple of weeks' time more about that and how you can join. Again, free of charge. And it's a chance to network with like-minded people. Um, so what is Vision Success? Well, it's the coaching arm of Cub. Uh, so we've got the free Wednesday, work Wednesday workshops. Uh, we've now got a book, Drive Sales with Digital Marketing. It's currently Kindle only. Uh, it's on Amazon. If you type in Drive Sales with Digital Marketing, you'll find it or go to our website and you've, there's a link to it to there. 
Uh, we do have a couple of online courses, which are low cost. Uh, and then we do, um, we've now got the app. Uh, so if anybody who wants to learn how to develop their marketing strategy and doesn't mind a beta tester, please uh, uh, drop your message, your name or details into um, into chat or email uh, Rachel Eglin at kub-uk.com and uh, she will uh, get you, send you the link. Yeah, Rachel's just popped that into chat there. Uh, and obviously we do one-to-one -one coaching. We've got, we can review your analytics, your your data and so forth, see what's working, what's not working. And we can do the whole thing, you know, from your business strategy through to uh, implementation uh, and all points in between. So this is the book. Um, if you go to visionsuccess.co and then it's got the book and then you've gone that page, it's got a link to Amazon. Um, it's uh, it took six years to put together, um, 60,000 words. We've got three chapters on um, the process and then another some chapters on practical uh, application. It's only in Kindle at the moment. We do hope to have a book, uh, the book, printed book soon. And then we've got a WhatsApp. So if you, again, email Rachel, um, this is in lieu of the um, networking hub, but we'll get moved to the networking hub uh, soon. Uh, hopefully after the 4th of March. Okay, that's enough about that. Um, so we're going to talk about how to develop a content marketing plan. So what, what we're, what, why it's important. We're going to talk about why it's important, but hopefully give you a framework that's relevant to you uh, and some ideas on how to, because you talk to people, oh, I don't know what to write. There's lots of, there's lots of stuff to write once you start thinking about it. And then you know, looking at ways to, to measure your performance. Okay, a few fundamentals first. So why have a content plan? Well, it's about, um, you've, you've probably heard of um, uh, sort of branding and, you know, people, sort of people um, uh, being consistent. Um, so, and, um, but it's, it's to ensure that you cover all aspects of your business um, are covered. The, the content, the, if you remember last week, we did the keywords and we looked at all the key, keywords and so forth. We won't have time to go through that again today. But um, if you've identified a whole bunch of keywords that you really want to get found for, um, even if it's just locally rather than nationally, which is a lot easier, um, you do need to be writing consistent articles. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll go explore some of the types then. And then uh, it's all about uh, trying to provide that comprehensive support for customers. We're just about to launch NetHub. And, um, you know, we've, we've one of the team has developed a whole bunch of um, keywords that are uh, uh, frequently asked questions. And um, it means that people can get answers to their qu questions quickly. And then using some kind of AI or some kind of web chat, you can make it very easy for them to find it, no matter what time of day. You know, we're coming to a, you know, we, 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 we've heard, you've probably heard of work-life balance, but it's more like a blended work um, where work is sort of fitted around other things and so forth. And we've all got hybrid working or quite a lot of us have got hybrid working. Um, so it's then, you know, how do you provide that 24 seven? Because somebody might decide that if they've got young kids, that they might start work again after they put the kids to bed. Well, they need access to answers and so forth. They can't ring you because you're not available. So it's all about making your services access accessible to other people, no matter what, no matter what your business is. This is from last week. Um, just to remind everybody, search engine optimization is a process of increasing the quality and quantity of uh, website traffic. The better the quality of the website traffic, people who are coming to your site because they're genuinely interested, means that's very helpful to you um, in terms of um, people who are who um, who. who your, your, your percentage bounce rate, that's, that's people coming in, going out, is lower. So Google thinks, oh, this is a really useful site and so forth. So you don't want to, in the old days, people used to put all sorts of weird and fun words in thinking that getting found and getting traffic is a good thing. 
Well, these days it's about getting quality traffic because Google knows what's going to your website um, because generally most people have got Google Analytics set up on it. Um, so they, they kind of know what's working, what's not. And um, um, uh, so the, um, uh, the, so I lost my track there. Um, yes, so it's all about getting those unpaid results and getting the right traffic to your site. Because you've got to think about it as, as we do more search, more search by voice, there can only be one answer and it's got to be yours that's at the top of that answer. So what is a content plan? Um, so you, you'll have a content plan for social media and you'll have a content plan for your articles and possibly a, a, another one for your email marketing. And as you can see, you, you think of different things. Um, you, you know, you've got Motivational Monday, Throwback Thursday, and Fun Friday. Um, you know, the, the people are thinking of different terms so on different days. And it's interesting, actually, if you look at LinkedIn on a Saturday and Sunday, it's different, the feed's different to what you'd see on Monday to Thursday. And then on Friday, you do get more fun, uh, fun Friday stuff uh, as people try to keep the uh, keep the um, uh, the interest up, you know. So that is different. Um, LinkedIn is moving more towards being like Facebook for business, uh, with a lot more personal stories on it and so forth. Still, kind of business related. It's not just fluffy dogs and babies and dogs and things. But uh, I've noticed a lot more, um, you know, people are sort of celebrating their achievements and so forth. So that makes it harder to get more educational material. But it still does work. We work with a group um, up until Christmas and then a group of, of sort of decided, decided to, to rethink their strategy and, and just to step back from any sort of marketing. And it's interesting their traffic was going like that and then it's just done that as we've stopped doing the social media for them. Um, so, you know, it can make, a, it can have a big impact. Um, if anybody's into uh, reading, then uh, this is the book, the sort of step-by-step -step guide to writing this content, still relevant, um, and it goes into, into, into quite some depth. But for most people, you don't need to, to understand this stuff. This is where, you start to have content and join up the content. So you take people on a journey through the site and so forth. I think one of the things that's happening is that uh, people are becoming more, right, I need to solve this problem. How do I solve it? Ah, there's the answer and, 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 and so on. Um, people's time is, is becoming even more, uh, is becoming shorter than it was before. Um, We've got um, the, the, there's a guy called uh, Brian Dean from Backlinko, <clears throat> really, really, really good. And he's got a comprehensive guide on copywriting. Um, you know, a lot of the ideas and concepts of, that, that we're presenting this morning are, um, uh, are, ba are based on, on this material. Um, it, it is very good. It is, very, it is comprehensive uh, and in depth. Um, so what's the benefits of good copywriting? Well, we need to get good, higher conversion rates on key pages. We want people to actually read this stuff. In the old days, when we talked about search engine optimization, um, and we heard of, you probably heard of the word keyword stuffing, where they'd stick keywords in, and it, from an English point of view, it was quite poor. Well, if you're using WordPress, there's a plugin called Yoast. And it actually has a readability score. It's got the SEO score, you know, where how many times keywords have been mentioned, but it also does a readability score. And, um, you, you know, the best articles are where you've got a green light for the SEO, but also a green light for readability. And it's quite interesting. I mean, I've got a quite a technical background and um, uh, I have to work quite hard at removing passive voice to make it more active voice, providing shorter sentences, et cetera. So, um, you know, there are tools there to, to make, that, make that easier, even if you're English, um, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're not a fluent author, then, um, you know, things like Grammarly, things like Yoast 
can certainly uh, help you uh, stay on the right side there. It is important to, to um, you know, have good structure uh, so that you tell the story in a consistent way uh, and um, uh, makes it easier for people to read. Uh, you'll also get more good engagement on social media posts. And, and if you've written nicely written content, people want to share it. Um, and, uh, and if you understand, really understand what your reader is looking for and what they want, and then you can talk to them directly. So we talked to a few workshops ago about the buyer persona. And that's why the buyer persona is so important that you need to know what it is your readers, what's really impacted, impacting your readers in relation to your services and, and, talk, and address, talk to that directly when you write. So as we mentioned, need to have your buyer persona sorted out. And um, if theirs is, a, theirs is a customer, a complex customer journey, so currently talking to a fostering comp a company that does fostering at the moment, and the journey is quite complicated. There's quite a few things I've got to think about. Um, and, and so it's understanding, you know, sort of what they need. We talked about awareness. We talked about acquisition. We talked about engagement in previous workshops is what... Um, um, you know, what, it, what, what are the pain points you've got to pick up before they go from liking, just liking you to trusting you as a business and therefore want to do business with you, whether you know, it's to place an inquiry or place an order. Um, you need a process for creating the content. Um, you can't leave it to Friday afternoon and think, oh, I've, got, I've still got that content, right? Um, everybody has a different time of day when they are, they are at their best. Writing to do it well needs to be done at your best time of the day. For me, you know, I'm a, um, I get up early, I wake up early naturally uh, at six. So if I want to do any writing or something, it'll be then, or it might be on a Sunday morning sometimes when I've, you know, when I've relaxed. And, you know, if you try to write and you can't write in a stressful environment, you've got to, you've got to be relaxed. And then thinking about how you're going to publish it how it's then going to be promoted because no point writing it if you're then not going to tell the world that it exists you know what um how are you going to measure the results what you're going to measure success as and then because you're measuring your success and what's working and what's not working you can go back and, and refine the process and this is what we do for, we do for clients so um if, if people, if you, if you if you know me, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek and start with why. And um, you should always start with, you know, why are you doing something? <clears throat> um, you know, it's, it's, it's why people buy from you. The, the people buy people, um, you, you know, and if, if, they, if people, so, so for example, I'm a big fan of Apple. This has been run from an Apple machine. I've got you know, Apple iPhone, iPads and stuff floating around. Um, I buy from them because th th they really believe in making things easy to use. Um, that's why I buy the, the Mac. The, the, it's more expensive and so forth, but I, I recognise that making things easier to use is, is 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 really important to me. It's not important to everybody. It's important to me. So that's why I buy. Uh, and people will buy from you for that particular uh, for for a reason. And um, and then hopefully you'll know what benefits your products and services provide, which is the how and the products and services that you offer. Well, you, your content the same. They've, they've got to buy into why you're writing that content. What is it? What's in it for me? You've probably heard that phrase. What's in it for me? Um, and 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 that's going to be answered at the top of the article. Um, and then the rest will follow. Um, so we talked about. By personas, um, it's really important. So we we um, work with companies who sell into the law sector and uh, and to the medical sector and to other sectors. It's really important you have the right language, the tone, and formality that's, that that your customers use. You know, so if you're marketing to to young people, then that's a completely different language than if you were marketing to a lawyer or an accountant or you know, business owner or a, an engineer um, and so on. Um, they each have their own 
that language. And if you're in a very competitive market, you really need to make sure. So I, we work with a telecoms company and they we did a series of videos, one for their medic, selling to medical, one for legal, um, one for insurance, one for finance, I think it was. And and each of them, we, we were changing the name, what customers called, you know, what the services were and so forth, even though it, we were selling the same thing. Um, you know, and uh, we had to do quite a lot of work on, on understanding that language. So um, everybody loves a story. There's a, I'll just uh, get, uh, get the book. Yeah, not on the slide deck, but hopefully you can see this. Um, a guy called Donald Miller is really good. Uh, and he calls it uh, building a, a story brand. Um, the um, and I quite like his, his approach because it's all about and he has a free board which you can then go through if you fill it in you can actually pick out who the main characters are and the story and so forth so even we talk about business we're not talking about uh, you know it's still um, uh, not a non-fiction it's still about um, writing about your business um, so in terms of the story you, you know um, uh, it's about getting that, so you get that personal connection. And um, and so we, we've often rephrased it as case studies. Um, you know, so you, you've got you where you're the, the sort of the knight in shining armour coming in to do the rescue, the protagonist who the client is with the problem and, uh, and um, you know, how they're going to, how they, what that problem is and how that's affecting them. And then there's that personal experience of how you've helped them. Um, you know, you're the expert, so you're coming in to, as, as I say, the knight in shining armor to, to, to sort of fix that problem. And, um, you know, the, so you've got the design of how you're going to fix it, and then you've actually got how you fixed it, and then what impact that fix had on your client. So, you know, and people love stories. That's how our brains are programmed to take information into the, you know, past the neocortex, into the lim limbic part of the brain. Um, it doesn't really communicate, but it understands stories. Another structure that um, I like is uh, using the old-fashioned ADA. You know, so you've got the attention-grabbing article. This is more for email content. Um, you've got developing their... So you grab their attention, develop their interest, you know, motivate them to you know, improve, um, get them to, to desire whatever it is that you're, you're marketing, and then a call to action. You know, quite a few articles and so forth don't have any call to action. You read the blog and go, well, that's all very nice, but where's a call to action? You know, you've spent a lot of time and energy getting them onto a website. When we were looking at a website the other day, and they've got the blogs, but there's no contact form. But no, oh right, you know, there's nothing, nothing to either keep them on site. So here's the next article for you to read, um, and there's no call to action on as well. So it's very important on the pages that display the blog that actually, you know, the traffic's coming in there. You've got to convert them. Okay, so some things on generating com com content do keep it simple. You know, what are the challenges your fate buyers face? Break down the buyer's journey, awareness stage, consideration stage, conversion stage, and retention. So it could be, you know, you need uh, you may need content for all those. So um, the FAQs, the frequently asked questions, might at the conversion stage. You might have some expert articles at the awareness stage. You know, is it what's the problem you're trying to solve? You know, these are sorts of problems in the industry. These are how they can be solved, and so forth. Consideration stage might be more detailed. It might be, you know, um, uh, details of the service and so forth. And then retention is how can, how can they improve? How, how can they use their services to get better and, uh, and so forth? Talks about case studies. And, um, and of course, you know, I would never, never suggest you ever copy from a competitor, but you can certainly get ideas from them. And uh, you know, what are they writing about? What 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 do they think is relevant? Okay. So uh, on them, um, so you need an attention grabbing headline. So if you Google kick-ass headline generator, 
um, it will come up with a, it's quite an old fashioned piece of software, uh, software has been on the web net for ages, but it's great. It just gives you those ideas that you can put into um, for emails, for example, or, or articles uh, that you can write that will <clears throat> um, help you sort of get people, grab their people's attention. You remember Ada, grabbing their attention, that's the title. Um, and then you've got to decide what tone you want to write. We're a big fan of jasper.ai, was jarvis.ai, uh, which is a, 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 an aid to writing, um, which uh, what we do is we tend to put in the raw keywords into it. Then it asks what it's on. Is it chatty? Is it instructional? Is it engaging? Is it helpful? Et cetera. Um, and, um, and then it will then sort of sketch out some words and then a human person will then go, oh, right, okay. And then we'll massage that to, to what we want to do. If it, sometimes if depending on um, uh, what the, what, what's required, we use it a lot for product descriptions and things which all have to be different. Um, you know, always trying to think of ways to add something new uh, so that the article addresses another angle and so forth. I mean, there's, there's tons of content out there, but there's still room for good quality content. And then write for the way people search. Um, Google looks at your website as a in context. So it's expecting to see articles around that. Um, I did go into a client a couple of years ago and he said, well, I'm thinking of putting, adding a directory of kind of local businesses to my website. I said, no, no, stop. That worked 20 years ago. It doesn't work now. It's about your website talking about all the stuff that you talk about that's important to your customers that solves that a particular problem which you solve. And that's the context. So it looks at the whole site, not just a few pages, looks at the whole site. So if you've got random things on your website, you need to take them off because Google's going to go, oh, this doesn't make sense. This is not in context. Um, and then write the way you talk. So use active. I'm a technical guy, so I tend to use passive. And then use hammers me for saying it's all passive. So write the way you would talk. And then allow subheadings to allow people to skim. People, you know, busy people might go, all oh, right, okay, and, and just bounce through your article. That's fine. They're still reading your article. They're still scrolling. Great for Google. Great for your website. And if they learn something and they and they go to the next action, then that's also that's work for you. As I mentioned earlier, shorter sentences and um, minimize technical words and jargon. Um, if we ever write about sort of things technical about websites and so forth, uh, it can be quite hard to actually get a good score in Yoast. Um, there's the how-to formula, you know, the article purpose, the problem, the design, and then the resolution. Um, one core idea, because basically if you think about it, you want to write four set of keywords. Well, those keywords are your core idea. And, uh, and then we talked about making sure you've got a call to action in there. Uh, so I mentioned some of these tools. So yoast.com plugin, uh, we think, still think it's the best. I noticed another one called I think all in one SEO is is being promoted by it's been promoted more heavily, but I, I'm still a fan of Yoast. Um, uh, Grammarly.com uh, is a fantastic tool. Um, it's not very expensive. There's a free version, and it, it just helps you with getting that the spelling and grammar. Um, you know, because in schools, you know, it's not you know the, the old style style it sort of. Uh, you know, learning grammar and so forth uh, has become less important. It's more about stories. Um, and, uh, and and so I think Grammarly these days is, is, is quite important. Uh, we use it internally to check our work um, because you can always miss things. Um, and using the active voice <clears throat> in, the, in technical people, um, and in a lot of English writing, we, we tend to use passive voice. Uh, whereas it's it's better to use the active voice, as I said, short sentences and minimise uh, technical. So, how what's our um, process for when we write content? Well, we we do the research. We have the buyer persona. We have the customer journey, so we know what point we're writing on the journey for, what they're <coughs> looking to do. 
Um, we then look at competitors. We mentioned the last workshop, we talked about Uber Suggest, uh, U-B-E-R Suggest. Uh, just type that in and Neil Patel, it'll come up. Uh, and you can find out what they're writing about within seconds. Uh, so a few clicks away. Um, answer the public is a really useful one if you're really stuck. You know, type in, you know, like uh, if you type in, say, digital marketing, it comes up with a whole plethora of questions that people ask about. You know, because this is about, at the end of the day, you're writing an article for you to be able to answer somebody's question. Find the time to write. Uh, for me, it's first thing. Um, uh, give yourself time. Creativity does take uh, um, take time. It also needs to be probably, in a, I would suggest, in a, a stress, you know, a low stress environment to be more relaxed and so forth. Um, think about why you're writing. Get that purpose right. Draft the ideas, then write down the words, and then review and edit, and get others to review it. We have an internal checking system for uh, articles. Uh, and then use Yoast or All in One to improve readability, and then you can publish and promote it. Um, need to mention about cornerstone articles. Everybody gasps when I talk about these. Um, these are longer articles, two and a half thousand words. But if you think about it, you know this hour, but this hour, this sort of half hour ish, of course, an hour, three quarters of an hour, we're going to spend going through this content. We'll, we'll when we put it through the uh, transcriptor. Um, will produce about two and a half, three thousand words. It's not a huge amount of. Um, yes, I'm covering a lot of content, and in in the recording, um, you know, you, you you could probably shorten that. But generally, it's not too difficult to write two and a half thousand words if you are an expert on that particular subject. Um, it does get trickier if you're, say, selling phones and things like that. Um, it's hard to write, but you can write about how you use technology. Um, and that's how we sort of do stuff for uh, telecoms uh, and IT companies. It's not so much about the technology because to be honest, these days, you know, the stuff is is a consumable, a phone is a consumable, not a huge amount of right to talk about features and so forth, but it's then how you use that technology, how you use that technology to solve your problems, your customer's problems. Um, these, these articles, about two and a half thousand words, they're called pillar, uh, 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 pillar content, or it can be called cornerstone, or it could be skyscraper. Um, it, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> it's all about writing something that's got some real depth and expertise to it and demonstrates your authority. Um, and uh, as I say, it needs, it, you break it up with, with subheadings and so forth, an H2 tag, uh, if you're familiar with uh, WordPress. Um, repurposing. Google like does really like to see your website kept up to date. So if you're a bit short of things to write about, um, maybe your subject is quite narrow, <clears throat> there's only so much stuff you can write about, go through and, and, and as is on, a, on a cycle, you know, three, six month or 12 month cycle and go through and, and edit all the articles. Google loves to see it all being kept up to date. It doesn't want to see, you know, an old library with lots of dust on it. You know, so you can either adjust it, combine it, or, you know, if you've written two articles that actually could go together, feel free to take one of them, one with the highest traffic, and, and add the other one to it. And then and then you can either point to, put a link in it and say, to tell Google it's there, which is called the car called link, or just, or just remove it if it's not got much traffic. Um, if you're using the pay for Yoast, it will then do an automatic uh, redirect on that. Um, as I mentioned here, don't duplicate articles unless you've set this tag. Um, it's, it's towards the bottom of the Yoast screen. So it's, it's relatively easy to do, but you do need to do it. Um, you know, and you know, we'll quite happily, if a client's a bit short on content for a month, uh, on genuine articles, then um, uh, we, we you can still republish older material on on social media. And then again, Google sees that traffic coming, so it's it's kind of happy with that. And um, uh, you, you know, is it a basis for video? Um, we're doing more and more experimenting a lot with video. There's, I can't give you any sort of other than the things we've, we've already done. Um, there's no real black and white rules yet or guidance I can give you 
on what makes the best video content. I, there was a rumor, or Neil Patel suggested it, Gareth yeah, Ruby suggest, um, that you know, creating a video of your content would, would work. Uh, we did that as an experiment, and actually our rankings dropped on that page, so we got rid of it again. Um, so at the moment, um, that's still got a question mark on it. Um, so some of the metrics, you know, if you if you're able to manage your brand, um, you know, what's the engagement? You know, how people, how long are people staying on your website and reading your content? Are they going in and going out again? Or thinking, oh, I could do is learn something else. But don't forget, people are there to solve the problem. Um, uh, you know, is it generating leads from it? Um, so working with a branding agency and um, they do some quite creative. Um, content on their LinkedIn, and um, it you know it it's, it it generates um, uh, you know leads for them, um, you know. So uh, uh, and then you know looking at your know, customer conversion and sales. Unfortunately, content is right at the top end. The awareness. If you remember, we did the marketing funnel a few weeks ago. If not, just watch the, the recording, and you've got the different stages of the marketing funnel. Uh, well, content is at the top of the marketing funnel generally, unless it's things like features or um, you know sort of you sort of specific tactical information that's used at the conversion stage, uh, and then of course website performance, digital traffic going up month on month. Uh, so a few things you can do. Um, case studies, I say the long form articles. Um, uh, product descriptions, you know, if you've got an e-commerce site, please pay attention to them, but also please pay attention to what are called the categories as well. Um, and um, if you ever want to add personality to your business without taking it really out of context, then charity events are really useful. Um, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of people, you know, like to see, you know, will we'll click on things and, and talk about things if, if you're doing stuff for charity. That's still a very powerful, and if if you've uh, got a, if you've got a corporate social responsibility policy, then charities help that with that as well. So, um, uh, so bringing it together, so document your buyer persona as we discussed uh, previous workshops. Map out the customer journey as we did um, a couple of weeks ago with the uh, uh, marketing funnel. Um, the slide decks are on the website if you need them and um, look at what you've done you know and then the key thing is 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 how often can you write there's no point committing to an article a week if an article a month is actually what you can achieve but better to do that one a one a month um, and and if you've not got any long articles on the website and you're and people don't find you um, from searching the web and so forth then you know once a quarter with a with a really long article, you know, because those will get found faster and rank better than shorter articles. And most of all, develop that content plan so you know what you're writing about, know what problems you're addressing, and uh, and of course <laughs> getting started. Okay, so um, we're going to just sort of a round up, go around the room. Um, Nobody's asked any any sort of questions in chat, so we're we sort of going around the room, sort of finding out what you guys are going to take away from today, and then we'll be looking at um, what problem marketing problems you're trying to solve. Okay. So, if it's okay with you, uh, William, well, um, what actions are you going to take away from today? Now you just need to knock yourself off mute. There you go. Oop. Really? Can you hear me? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I I I have tinkered with a with a, a blog on my website, and I think it's quite useful for for saying things like wines, because there's lots of stories um to do with wine uh you know going down to the winery themselves you know they, how they developed but also the development of certain 
um, appellations, you know, um, buyer preferences and things, what's happening um, in Europe, what's happening in the new world. There's plenty of stories out there. Um, I'm actually going to focus um, uh, my content plan around um, sulfite, low sulfite wines uh, and okay. sulfite-free sulfite wines, which I think is a, um, it, it, you know, it, it's what people are talking about now, reducing the amount of additives in, in food. Um, so that's going to be um, one of the, I, I probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a, uh, um, a long, a long form article on that probably. Um, I've, I've still got to nail down my personas. I think really who I'm going to be selling to because there's, there's a mixture uh, of um, private sales on the website and also restaurants uh, for the on on trade as well. So that's going to be a tricky one, but uh, I'll have a crack at that. Um, and I was, I'm also. Um, going to take up some of the some of the things like answerthepublic.com what is being the sort of questions that people ask about wine i thought that was a very good idea um yes yeah, so answer the public absolutely yeah it's interesting is this a sulfide that gives you the hangover well yeah this I, I there is some um scientific evidence that it is yes it is the sulfite which Gives it. You know, sometimes um, you get that rosiness. Sometimes when you when you drink a lot of wine, yes. that might come to do the sulfite. So that needs looking into. But I mean, I can expand on that, and I think that'd be that'd be good. Com hopefully, be good content. I think that would be excellent content. My wife sometimes suffers with the cheaper wines. Yeah, you know, with that that red flush. Yeah, and um, you know, so obviously you don't want that to happen. Yeah. So you know that that. I, there will be, I would imagine, people searching. So if you, you if you ask that in the answer to the public, yeah, it, it'll hopefully give you some clues as to what the question people are actually asking. Yeah, brilliant. Cheers, uh, 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 William. Is it is it William or, or did you say yeah, that's right? It's William. That's right. Do you find yeah. that? Cool. I just saw that. Is it a Dutch surname? Uh, yes, yes, it is. My dad, uh, dad came over after the war, but uh, yeah, yeah, I got an right, okay. English <laughs> I've I've lived in you know I can't speak the language but I mean you know a lot of people ask me you know are you Dutch um, but because of the because of the name but I was going to anglicise it but my dad said no no it's it, it's good enough as it is so yeah yeah no absolutely <laughs> absolutely well my son's just spent five hundred hours learning Dutch so uh... yeah. <laughs> It's on my bucket list, maybe for for later on. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can say is Danke Val. <laughs> Danke Val, yeah. <laughs> Prima. <laughs> uh, Gemma, um, I noticed you've asked a question to apply to email marketing. Uh, yes and no. Um, obviously, you don't want to write a two and a half thousand word article uh, for email. We will be covering email marketing uh, in a few weeks' time. Um, but um, the ADA certainly uh, goes to it. Uh, email marketing. So what, what actions are you going to take there, Jim? Uh, so thanks very much. I'm the first one I've been to of these. And so loop wheels, we are wheelchair wheels with suspension, um, which we sell internationally. So mm -hmm. a lot of one of our challenges is about thinking about, you know, UK versus international markets. So I think one of the things I'm going to do, first of all, is stop thinking about that as being a challenge and just concentrate on doing better in the UK, actually, because we need to do better in the UK. I bet that some of our better markets are actually um, Germany, Netherlands and Norway and the rest of Europe. Um, website. We don't put anything on our website, really. It's rubbish. So that's my takeaway from today. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, we've got lots of old articles that haven't been looked at for two years. Just refresh, redo all of those new stuff. So that's my main thinking okay well we'll be um i think it's next week is it uh, rachel um we're doing websites so we're going to do a deep dive into yeah, websites right. so um i do reckon if, if you're targeted as an international audience um then uh, yes there's lots of things you can do to to help um get that we you know see because we're now back as an island again um uh, you know, not part of Europe. So trading with Europe isn't as easy as it used to be. Um, we are having to look around the rest of the world and we're getting, we're looking at how to cheaply 
um, or cost effectively, or not cheaply, cost effectively um, uh, internationalize existing websites. And um, actually, it's not that expensive. Um, but you do need the tricky bit is actually the translation. Um, but we don't, the automated translation doesn't, well, it kind of works. We did that for quite a few years ago. But um, really, if you're actually serious about doing business in other countries, uh, not you know non English speaking countries, then um, you you need to look at um, uh, sort of how to go multi site. But it's, it's possible to take an existing Word site, WordPress site and turn it into a multi site. That's interesting. I think I think for us, I mean, we sell many through distributors, so it's about oh, as I say, it's it's more about actually that's going fine. It's more about okay, so what do we do that's better in the UK where we can oh. do B two C more. Okay, B to C. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Holly, you'd like to share with us what you're going to take away from today? Hi, so I'm I'm pretty new to the uh, marketing role. So thank you for putting these on. They've been really helpful. Um, so I've taken over, I work for a construction company and I've taken over their marketing at the moment. So the interesting one for me was before I started doing this role, our website wasn't um, ever really looked at or edited. Um, so <laughs> it was uh, left to its own devices. But the interesting thing was looking at rewriting old articles and rewording them and sort of republishing them. Uh, yeah. We use WordPress for our website. So I've also been trying to navigate that. Um, but yeah, just when you said Google likes likes it in the slide what what did you mean on that do you mind sort of expanding on on that well in in sort of refreshing the uh, content yeah did you mean it kind of brings those articles up the search engine list yeah sort of? so um so one not in the previous last week we covered you know sort of what the objectives are for, for a search engine but essentially they want to they Google wants to be, I don't know whether they, how well known this is, but they want to be the knowledge engine of the world. You know, so they, they've got, you know, you know, thousands and thousands of servers and so forth with all this sort of knowledge on it. And as a website developer, we have to think about how we structure the data underneath. Now, you won't see many website developers talking about this, but actually, if you're serious about being found on Google, you do need to actually, if you like, structure the website so it acts as like a database now if you've got yoast it does it automatically there's a wizard that takes you through to, to sort of tell you to ask you a bunch of questions which sets up that structure so it's it's not um you don't have to go all technical you just follow the wizard and it and boom you've done it you need your company details logo and you know a few, a few bits of other pieces and what it does it it structures your you can't see it, but it structures your data. So Google goes, ah, brilliant. I, I understand this a lot quicker than somebody who's not bothered doing it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the way it likes it updating is that if people haven't touched content, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what the decay curve is on, on certain information. I know in our world, it's quite rapid. And um, at some point during this year, our content writer is going to have to go back and go through all our content to make sure it's up to date. Um, and, and why it likes it is that its job is to provide the most accurate, the most authoritative, the most expert answer to your question. Because if you think about it with all these sort of voice devices, um, uh, it can only give one answer. And, you know, because, I mean, in the US, they sue everybody for everything, don't they? They're very litigious. Um, so it doesn't want to be presenting information that's not that's inaccurate or not expert. So by going through your website, and because it knows when a record has been touched, so it knows that the last time you updated it, um, it can go, oh yeah, this is this has been updated. This is they're obviously keeping this information accurate, and that's mm. that's his key thing that the information displays has to be accurate. Um, you know, and again, yeah. So it is a worthwhile exercise. You know, you know, and don't do it all at once. Don't go. I'll take it to the website. You know, I'll I'll do it all at once. Don't do that. 
do it on a rolling basis. So then Google sees this continual updates to the site. It's why you used, in the old days, people used to put Twitter on the site and so forth, Twitter feeds and so forth, because it was, you know, bringing, keeping the content live and up to date. But, you know, that sort of game went past some time ago. Okay, great. That's really helpful. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, and uh, Philippa, is there anything, uh, what actions are you going to take away from today? It's, my strategy is slightly different because um, I'm a commercial cleaning company, so the idea behind the first project, first um, marketing project, is to attract a, a, a good calibre of staff, so it's predominantly regarding recruitment. Um, so across, across all the platforms, we're, seeing, we're going to focus on Facebook and using the business page. We have a business page and a recruitment page um, because we are in a global recruitment crisis and um, just to to help that um, situation and just to explain to our potential employees um, why we are an employer of choice um, and the benefits of working, working with us. Yeah, so your website, so nobody, you, you know, I mean... I don't know. Finding a cleaning company can be quite tricky. So, I mean, do you when you when somebody searches in your area, your locality, uh, cleaning companies near me, you need to do this in incognito mode. You, know, you go to the three dots and click on the incognito mode, or I think it's private on some of the browsers. Do you come up on that little map of of um, you know showing the cleaning companies in your locality? Oh no, but. That's not what we're trying to achieve at them. It's not directly sales. It's not, not sales. We're not That's trying true. to directly set, sell to our prospects through this right. strategy. It's it's the it's the content for recruitment, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So you buy a so, you, so you've got like like two buyers personas. You've got the companies who you sell to, or businesses, or whoever you sell to. But then actually, you've you've got to sell to your. Um, um, uh, you know, prospective employees as well. Yeah. And um, it's becoming more of an issue uh, for, for folk. Um, yeah, so the website, so really, so writing a lot, lots of content for you is probably not a great thing. Um, what we did with um, a care, care domiciliary care company who have the same target, the same sort of people that you do, um, is um, we actually uh, video interviewed uh, quite a few of the staff as to why they liked working with the company. Mm. So uh, it's it's a bit off topic, but in terms of today, but it's that's that um, that worked well, and then and the staff enjoyed doing it. Uh, have you have you got a, got anything like that on your website? Yeah, we have uh, a day in the life. Like, okay. We don't have any video content. Um, you say it worked well. It worked well in what respect? Well, in recruiting people, in recruiting people, so they could people, you know, when when people looking at them, try to differentiate your, you know, that that care agency, the care agency. Oh, well, you know, the staff seem to like it there. They seem to enjoy it. Um, you know, it's because different people have different ways of looking after this staff, and. Um, it's super important that if you want the best staff, you've got to be the best employer and 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 market that. Um, and that's how you know the, be the 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 better companies continue to grow because they they think as just as much about their customers uh, their employees as they do their customers. Yeah. And the nice thing about all that is it actually helps with getting more clients because clients go, oh, this is a cool company to work for," you know. Maybe, yeah, you know, I don't, is it business to business cleaning you do or is it business to consumer? Yeah, just B2B commercial. Yeah, but if but if you want to attract the best clients, they would see that, hey, these guys look after their after their um, their employees. And so you, your marketing for your for your employees would would you know help your that for the rest of the business as well. Yeah, we also support the National Living Wage Initiative. Yeah. 
I know. That is a nightmare. That is a nightmare. Um, what's, what's a nightmare? Well, the, that national, you know, the the, 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 that, the NI increase and also the wage, the, 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 it racks up again. Every year. Mm. But it's, it, it, it's quite a large, it's, you know, if you look at the journey, how many years has it been doing? About six, is it? Seven? So that's quite, it's not that long. It's gone from about six point something to nearly 10 quid an hour, isn't it? £9.90. £9.90. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's only the, when you're in those sorts of situations, it's only those companies that are willing to pay, you know, those better companies. So it's that flight to quality. And, and you as a supplier have to follow that, you know, because you've lost, you know, it's, you know getting employees is getting harder. Oh, as you know, you can't compete on price. It's just, mm. it's a road that you don't want to go down. No, no, absolutely not. It's got to be quality, quality every time. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank okay. you very much. Yeah. Thank any you. More, any more questions? No? no, I've really enjoyed the content. Um, thank you. I liked especially the and to the public.com. I'll be having a look at that. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming along. Uh, next week, we're looking at websites. And um, we do... Um, um, uh, thank you to your girl, is it, Maurice? Uh, uh, thank you for that, your comment. Um, yeah, so we're looking at uh, websites next week and uh, how you can, what you need to be doing to look after them. Look at all the free tools that are available. Uh, Maurice, yeah, hi. Um, uh, looking, looking at those... And um, we've got the WhatsApp group if you want to be part of that. And I um, hope you all have a great week and look forward to seeing you next week.